but it just in life in general. Did you ever think from back then when we were doing interviews that this is uh, the road that you guys would follow? You know, I'm, I, I'm actually kind of like embarrassed to admit that I remember one of the first really heady, involved conversations we had when we were still almost, I think, 19 or 20 years old with our first manager was about the role we would play in influencing people in our age group and the responsibility that you have as an artist when you have a microphone and a platform. And so I think actually we were very aware that at some point, you know, whether it was one person or a million people that people were going to be looking at us. So it was always really woven into the fabric of us to think about others and, you know, social justice and the influence we would have on the queer community. I mean, that's why we chose to be out right from day one. You know, I think we just we just knew it. I don't think we understood it. I don't think this this would blow little Tegan and Sarah's minds, but I don't think I, I don't think it was completely lost on us that there was a responsibility when you had a microphone. Great to see you. Nice to see you too. Uh, next up right here. Hello. Hi. Hi, Dean and Sarah. How are you? Good. <laughs> Melody from CBC. Hi, Melody. <laughs> um, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you know, as people know, uh, your mom really instilled that activist spirit in you um, from early on. Uh, who are some other musicians or people in your lives who have inspired your activism? I mean, when we were in high school, I remember getting Ani DeFranco's Living In Clip live album. And while it wasn't like overtly political, I remember it was one of the first times that I heard a woman speaking to an audience. I'd heard lots of live albums in our household that involved men telling stories about their lives. But Ani DeFranco was really, she was the first one that I'd heard do that. And it had a huge impact on us. And I think it's not, uh, it's not a coincidence that we pretty much started our career, like literally opening for Neil Young at 20 years old being like, Hello, Neil Young fans. So let me tell you a little bit about, you know, what happened today or whatever. Like, you know, we really learned to sort of like bring in our own um, our own story to hopefully, I guess, like make people like us and disarm people. Um, so besides Ani, oh, you want to do one? Well, I wanted to add that I, I remembered this earlier, but Sarah and I, our first concert was at a mall seeing Katie Lang in 1985, I believe it was. And Sarah and I have really long hair. And after that show, um, we begged to have all of our hair cut off. And I think that it's sort of significant to look back on that now to see like how important representation is. And that was like sort of the first woman we'd ever seen with short hair. And I, I don't, I'm not saying that we knew we were gay at that age, but I think we saw something in, in Katie and it really influenced us. So I think like, you know, just that she was a hairstyle. Icon. She, yeah, she was an icon. Right there. Mike. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Uh, David James, CIUT 89.5 in Toronto. Congratulations. And thanks for all your advocacy over the years. Um, what can we do to progress social change? What what do each and every Canadian? What do they need to do to progress this? What what what, what are the next steps? Because things are at a bit of a crossroads again, unfortunately, after years of progress. But what can we all do as Canadians to move this forward? Look, you know, I, I, there's absolutely no denying we've made incredible progress. I don't think that people thought in our lifetime we'd see, you know, equality or marriage equality. I remember being told in my early 20s that I wouldn't see that in my lifetime. So. Um, I think we'd be remiss not to say that the enormous step forward has ha happened in this country and around the world for LGBTQ people. I think we get comfortable when we see change and marriage equality in so many places, I think, made us think like, all right, work here is done. And it's not. Um, I think with the Tegan and Sarah Foundation and just Sarah and I in general in our lives, we think of safety and security and progress as making people feel good. We start by making our community feel strong and feel taken care of. and. Um, and that's a really big step forward. I'm not saying in any way that I think that what's happening across this country, um, you know, the, the movement against trans youth and the conservative government um, putting their nose where it doesn't belong isn't something that we should be worried about. It is. We shouldn't be complacent. We should step up. We should remember that our youth are the leaders of the next generation and so we should encourage them to be strong and we should protect them. But I also think that we have a voice like all of us like to remind our government that they should be focused on more important things climate change climate change the fentanyl crisis the housing crisis like there's so many other things to be focused on so i think that sometimes conservatives use this as a distraction and i hope people don't become distracted become empowered take to the streets sign petitions encourage people in your community look for people who are marginalized and support them speak up don't become complacent sweet uh, last question right here Hi, uh, Howard Druckman from SOCAN. Congratulations on the Humanitarian Award. That's amazing. Um, two questions, one short, one long. First short question, who are you wearing? Because <laughs> it's great looking. 
And the uh, second question is, I mean, you've, you've done books, you've gone into the world of TV, uh, obviously the music, uh, humanitarian. What's the next world you're going to conquer? <laughs> I just watched The Three Body Problem, and it's just like in my brain. I don't want to conquer anything, okay? I'm a pacifist. <laughs> Sorry, um, bad work. I'm, uh, no, um, I'm wearing International Citizen. Um, Tegan, what are you wearing? Oh, my God. <laughs> Did you just read it wrong? Uh, uh, Feng Chen Wang. Yeah. Um, yes. The man suit. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, Tegan and I think of ourselves almost more just like storytellers these days than anything, and we really sort of see links between, you know, the work we've done in publishing and the work we're trying to do in TV, the work we do in music, um, even even to, to some degree with the foundation. I mean, we find that the most profound, acute way to affect people is to tell them a story. I sit on airplanes and in boardrooms and at dinner parties, whatever. I, if I can tell someone a story, I know that I can connect with that person and I can, I don't know, we, and, 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 and vice versa, you know, like to be able to hear stories is, is, is sort of like, it's the way we've always done it as human beings. And so, um, you know, Tegan and I are just like, we just want opportunities to tell stories. That's it. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Tegan and Sarah, thank nice you so much. Welcome.